Good morning to all of you. Ms. Grasha Michelle, fellow panelists, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to welcome all of you this morning. UNICEF couldn't be more pleased to be a co-organizer of this first Global Newborn Health Conference in 2013. I want to thank the government and citizens of South Africa, first of all, for welcoming us so graciously to this beautiful country. I can think of few settings more appropriate for launching a global plan for action and advocacy. If South Africa has taught us anything, it is that advocates can be heard worldwide when they speak with one passionate voice. That collective action makes a difference when it intervenes on the side of justice and that we can change the status quo when we work together. That is why we are here today. I want to thank, too, the partners that helped make this conference a reality, especially WHO, USAID and its flagship program, MCHIP, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and Save the Children and its initiative, Saving Newborn Lives. We can see the impact that we, as a global community of governments, UN agencies, civil society, and private sector partners, are already making on the child survival landscape. The past 20 years, as you all know, saw unprecedented declines in under five mortality. You know the statistics from 12 million to 6.9 million in 2011 in just 10 years. As impressive as these gains are, they are insufficient. Insufficient to keep every child from dying from causes that are so easily prevented with simple cost-effective interventions. Insufficient to give every mother the best possible care during pregnancy and childbirth. Insufficient for us as a global community to meet MDGs 4 and 5 by 2015. As the Honorable Minister of Health of South Africa said last night, however, we have time to close the gap a full thousand days. Being together here this week is a tremendous opportunity to accelerate declines in child mortality by focusing on one major area where progress has been the weakest. The data show that the rate of neonatal mortality is reducing at half the speed of maternal mortality and one third slower than child deaths that occur after the first month of life, which is why newborn deaths represent a growing percentage of child deaths, about 43% in 2011, up from 36% in 1990. Most of these deaths, as you have heard, are caused by preterm birth complications and complications during birth, which account for 35% and 23% of all neonatal deaths, respectively, and inadequate maternal care during pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum. The development of the Global Newborn Action Plan, which UNICEF is pleased to be a part of, will create opportunities for all of us to work together to address the full spectrum of, our, of care for mothers and newborns. To make the most of these opportunities, we must direct our efforts and our resources toward those places where the rates of neonatal and maternal mortality are the highest. We know that the heaviest burden of neonatal and maternal deaths falls on South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Across the two regions, 60 million women give birth outside of a health facility, usually at home, and 52 million give birth without the aid of a skilled birth attendant. Across all regions, the burden of neonatal and maternal mortality falls disproportionately on the poorest families, those who are le least able to access the resources needed to keep their women and children alive throughout pregnancy, during childbirth, and beyond. The experience of UNICEF shows that we can achieve the biggest results by focusing on those people, the, the poorest and most disadvantaged communities. We know what needs to be done. We have the high impact interventions needed to prevent those senseless deaths of newborns and mothers, sparing families the agonizing loss of a daughter, wife, daughter, or, or a son. Many of these interventions are simple, scalable, and affordable. And we now have a powerful constituency, all of us here, to advocate for attention to newborn and maternal health. Over the past year, more than 170 countries have pledged to redouble efforts to end preventable child and maternal deaths. Under the banner of a promise renewed, governments and partners are scaling up high impact strategies needed to achieve the goals of the Secretary General's Every Woman, Every Child strategy. What differentiates a promise renewed 
which is what this global movement is called, from previous global attempts to ramp up action on child survival, is that governments are fueling the momentum and people from the grassroots are asking for change. In the past few months of 2013, uh, we have seen Ethiopia, India, and just last week, Zambia, mobilize their line ministries, development partners, and citizens around a common agenda to save the lives of their nations, children, and mothers. What's more, these governments are emphasizing the crucial importance of public accountability for progress against national targets. But no one government, development agency, or civil society organization can meet these targets alone. We need to work together across technical sectors and political constituencies and with the active engagement of individual citizens. That is why we are here. We need to leverage every available strategy to target the proximate and underlying causes of maternal, newborn, and child mortality. This includes initiatives such as the UN Commission for Life-Saving Commodities for Women and Children, the Secretariat for which is hosted by UNICEF and UNFPA, and many, many other initiatives across sectors of health, nutrition, water and sanitation, education, and HIV and AIDS. By focusing attention on the neonatal period, the Global new Newborn Action Plan will add a critical dimension to the global roadmap for maternal and child survival. By working together to support the plan, we can bend the curve on newborn deaths and give every child the best possible start in life. Today is the first step, an opportunity to sit together, share experiences and lessons learned, and most importantly, to identify the priority actions that we need to take as we embark upon that global roadmap for the future. As last night's impromptu dancing showed us so vividly, we are a vibrant community that can make amazing things happen at the spur of a moment. Imagine what we could do if we applied that same spirit to our planning over the next few days. So I say, go for it. Let's make it happen. Thank you. <laughs>